Welcome to our Bible study beside the warm wood stove and happy Sabbath. The name of this song is called O Day of Rest and Gladness. O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lowly who bend before the throne. Sing holy, holy, holy to the eternal one. Thou art a port protected from storms that round us rise, a garden intersected with streams of paradise. Thou art a cooling fountain in life's dry, dreary sand. From thee, like Pigsa's mountain, we view our promised land. A day of sweet reflection, thou art a day of love, a day to raise affection from earth to things above. New grace is ever gaining from this our day of rest. We seek the rest remaining in mansions of the blessed. Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this Sabbath day to rest. Thank you that even though it's cold outside, we have a warm wood stove. Thank you that in the coldness of this world, we have the warmth of your presence. And we ask for your presence here through your Holy Spirit. Please bind Satan and his evil angels. Give us the ability to not only understand your word, but to apply your principles from your word in our lives. We ask that you would speak to us now through your word, and we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. This is Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42 and verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42, verse 8. Jonah, would you like to try it?
I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42.8. Go Jonah. Woo! <laughs> Good job. Uh, this is Jonah's second day of working on this. We, This is my third day of working on it. He was tired last night and wasn't with us, but... Uh, yeah, very good. Monty, would you like to try them? This would be your... All right, this would be Monty's first time working on this memory verse. Uh, um, I, I am the Lord, that is my name. Uh, and? And my glory will I not give to another, neither my uh, praise to graven images, Isaiah 42, 8. Wow, <laughs> Jesus gave you a sharp mind. Would you like to try that one more time? Okay. And you might not need my help this time. I am the Lord. That is my name. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me think about this. And my and my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Isaiah 42, 8. Wow. Woo! <laughs> Go, Marty. <laughs> That's excellent. Wow. There is nothing that will sharpen the mind as much as the memorizing, the study of God's Word. Okay. We are in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verses 1 through 6. Yeah, I need to hit record. Thank you. 1 Samuel chapter 5 verses 1 through 6. So there's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. 1 Samuel. So we're in the ninth book. Ninth book. This is a fascinating story. So the Philistines had captured the ark from the Israelites and they took it into their temple where their God was. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashtod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashtod arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before Dagon, and set him in his place again. So, the first morning, what happened to their god, Dagon? He had fallen over on his face. <clears throat> so the ark was here, and then Dagon had fallen down face first in front of the ark. So they set Dagon back up. Was Dagon able to set himself up? No. No. And when they arose early in the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. So the second morning, what happened to Dagon? He was toppled over in front of the ark again. His head and hands were chopped off. So apparently his head and his hands broke off this time when he had fallen over. 
Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashtod unto this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashtod, and he destroyed them, and smote them with imrods, even Ashtod and the coasts thereof. What are imrods? Uh, imrods is an old English term for hemorrhoids. So, hemorrhoids are where in the rectum the blood vessels swell up and it's like a really painful swelling and so someone with hemorrhoids it's an excruciating pain to have a bowel movement hemorrhoids are a, 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 like a swelling there in the rectum uh, that is very 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 painful so the philistines were definitely not very happy campers they thought that by capturing the ark, they would have more power and more prosperity, but they found that it seemed to work against them. We are on page 143, lesson 9, day 3. God had used the Philistines as the instrument to punish Israel, and he employed the ark to punish the Philistines. The Philistines took the ark to Ashtod, one of their main cities. There they placed the ark in the house of their god Dagon. The next day when they entered the temple, Dagon had fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of Jehovah. The priests carefully put the idol back in its place. But the next morning they found it, strangely mutilated, again lying upon the earth before the ark. The upper part of this idol was like that of a man, and the lower part was in the likeness of a fish. Now every part that resembled the human form had been cut off, and only the body of the fish remained. They now removed the ark from their temple and placed it in a building by itself. So apparently, when Dagon was apparently seemed to worship the ark or the god behind the ark, it was very disastrous for their god to fall down in front of the ark. The Inhabitants of Ashtod were smitten with a distressing and fatal disease called Imrods. It was decided to move the ark to another city. The Philistines did not honor God or his law and were reaping the result of their idol worship. God was so patient and long-suffering with the wicked Philistines. Okay, we have some review questions. Uh, this is the answer to this question is found in First Samuel chapter five and verse one. Where did the Philistines take the ark? From they moved it from Ebenezer to Ash, Ashdod. Yes, that is correct. And according to 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 6, what happened to the Philistines? Do you want to answer, Marty? I think you kept the question, but... Um, the Philistines were smote with um, emeralds, mm. hemorrhoids. Very painful. Why do you think that the Lord caused their idol Dagon 
to fall down like it was worshiping towards the ark. To desecrate a graven image. <laughs> yes. Do you think he wanted the Philistines to realize that he was a greater God than their God? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a, a fascinating story, and it becomes even more interesting. Uh, I think that the most interesting part of the story will be the next lesson that we come to. I'm so thankful that my God, Jehovah, Yahweh, I'm grateful that He is the great God, greater than all the other false gods. He is the living God. Dagon was only a stone. But my God is alive. He lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. The antenna and mouth parts of a moth. Many moths have two feather-like antennae that go out from between their compound eyes. These antennae are used for smelling. They are very sensitive to chemicals in the air. During mating season, a female moth gives off chemicals or pheromones into the air. The antenna of a male moth can smell a female as far as five miles or eight kilometers away. Wow, that's impressive. Adult moths feed most of the time on liquids like flower nectar and juice from fruits. They have a long hollow tongue similar to a straw called a proboscis. The nectar is sucked up through the proboscis when the mouth is hungry. Excuse me, the nectar is sucked up through the proboscis when the moth is hungry. This long tongue is stored under the head where it coils up. Hmm. I didn't realize that the proboscis can curl up. Moths can see with their compound eyes smell with their antenna, and feed with their proboscis. Dagon, the false god of the Philistines, could not see, 
smell, or eat. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. Psalm 115 verses 4 through 8. If Israel had honored God in their lives, they could have taught the surrounding nations, like the Philistines, about the only true God. They would not have lost the ark or the thousands of men who had been killed. Psalm 115 verse 9 says, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Do you honor false gods in your home? Cast them down before the ark and God's law. For example, certain kinds of music can be a false god, television, video games, certain unhealthful foods that you know are not good for you. You can place those, whatever you place that is more important than doing God's will, to you that is an idol. Let's remember how God severed the human part of Dagon from the fish part. God is not in favor of amalgamation in any form, even inanimate. So Dagon had some parts of a fish and some parts of a man. And when you mix an animal and a human together, that's what's called an amalgamation. And God does not approve of amalgamations. Parents, look over your children's toys and books and get rid of those that combine human features or apparel with the animals. This lesson, the distinction that should exist in the child's mind between human and animal. Uh, Sometimes children have uh, clothes that where they're dressing up to look like an animal. So they look kind of like a human, kind of like an animal combined. And the Lord is not pleased with that. And sometimes we do things that are out of ignorance. So we don't know that that's displeasing to the Lord. But as we learn and we grow, we can come more into line with His will. Satan is very subtle in sowing seeds for his doctrine of evolution as well as the abominable practice of amalgamation. So with the theory of evolution, the theory is is that animals slowly became humans. Now Satan would like people to believe that, and then Satan would also like for humans, with their reasoning power and with their ability to love and serve God with a conscience, he would like to take humans and lead them to become animals. And so sometimes where we see people dressing up as animals or identifying as an animal, it's evidence that Satan is influencing the mind and he's trying to take people away from their exalted position as sons and daughters of the king and he wants to bring them down into the form of an animal. Animals are intelligent and they're very gifted and smart, but they don't have a conscience like we do as humans. But what Satan's goal is, is he wants to bring you down to the level of an animal where you will not be able to hear your conscience speaking to you any longer. 
Let's not allow Satan to bring us down to the level of an animal. Let's stand up in our God-given strength and be the sons and daughters of our king as he designed. Often delicious smells waft from the kitchen. As you catch these scents, consider how the moth smells with its antenna. What kind of eyes does it see with, and what does it feed with? Dagon, the idol of the Philistines, could not see, smell, or eat. The fire is getting warm. I'm going to turn it down. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 8 through 11 says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he answered, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant. And the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Failure. It is sad to fail. If birds have built its nest on twigs too slender to sustain its weight, it will mourn on seeing its unhappy state. When some strong wind has torn it from its rest, the rose whose early buds an ugly pest has blighted deems the summer all too late. To strive again, the moths, whose change by fate reveals but crumpled wings and ragged crest, has naught to hope. The bird may build again, made wiser by mistake. The roses bloom, but sweeter for the early loss. Alas, the moth can live but once. Oh, not in vain is failure in a life, but what the doom of lives that fail? Will any answer pass? We do not have to fail with the Lord as our helper. As we allow Him to work in us and through us, to strengthen us, to mold us, and shape us. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we do not have to fail as long as we allow you to strengthen us and guide us in your path. Bless those of us that are here and those that will watch later and give every one of us a special Sabbath blessing. We thank you and we ask in the name of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen.